In this video, I want to explain how to use the Metropolis Hastings algorithm to sample from a target distribution for a parameter that is constrained. So the example that I'm going to use here is imagine that our data xi is normally distributed about some known mean mu and some standard deviation sigma, which is unknown. So for this example, because we know the mean mu, the only thing that's uncertain is the standard deviation sigma. And that means that our posterior distribution is a posterior distribution over sigma. And because sigma represents a standard deviation, it is bounded between zero and positive infinity. It can't be negative just by definition. So the question is, what should we do in this circumstance? The first thing we could try would just be to use uh, the standard Metropolis algorithm. And in the standard Metropolis algorithm, what we would do in each step is that we would generate a proposed value of sigma, call it sigma t, by drawing from, say, it was usually a normal distribution which is centered on our current position, sigma t minus 1. And I should say here that actually it's sigma t primed, it's our proposed value of sigma t, it's not necessarily the place that we're going to be stepping to. And this proposal density has some step size, which I'm going to leave out here. That's something that you need to choose. And what we could do is, if we use this algorithm, naturally we would reject any sigma t primed where they're less than zero, because the probability density of sigma t being less than zero is zero. But what's the problem with using this sort of algorithm? So whilst this algorithm works, it will converge to the posterior distribution. The problem is that we're going to reject a high proportion of sigma t primed if there is significant posterior probability mass which is near to zero. So because of that, we're going to have a relatively inefficient sampler. So let's just explain a bit more about why that is. We imagine that we've got a posterior probability, a target density, which might look something like this orange line which I'm drawing here. So this is sigma here. So what we'd like to do is we'd like to step, obviously, a lot of our time near this posterior mode. But if we are stepping here and we're using a normal proposal density, then some of the time we're going to propose a value which is allowed, so we're going to propose a value which is sigma being positive, but a lot of the time we're going to propose a negative value of sigma, which has got, by definition, a zero posterior probability, and hence we're going to be essentially staying in the same place quite often. So we're going to be rejecting a lot of our sigma values just because they're proposing an infeasible value of sigma. And so this high proportion of rejected samples means that we are going to move around parameter space inefficiently. So what might we do instead? Well, naively, what we might do is we might try to use the Metropolis algorithm, but instead of using the above proposal mechanism, what we do is we do rejection sampling. So we sample a value of sigma t from, let's say, a normal distribution, which is centered on sigma t minus 1 with some step size, and then if sigma t is less than zero, in that circumstance, we try again. And we propose a new value of sigma t from a normal centered on sigma t minus one. And the idea is that we sort of repeat this process while sigma t is less than zero, or sigma t prime rather is less than zero. And so in that way, we are guaranteed that we will always generate a proposed value of sigma t primed, which is positive. But what's the problem with this? Well, the problem with this second proposal mechanism is that essentially it violates the assumption of the Metropolis algorithm, which says that the probability of jumping from some value sigma t minus 1 to sigma t primed has got to be equal to the probability of going in the opposite direction from sigma t primed to sigma t minus 1. So we haven't got a symmetric proposal distribution. What does that mean tangibly? Well, what it means is that values of sigma which are a long way away from zero will be sampled from a reasonably high amount. So if we were just looking at the proposed values of sigma, away from zero, we would sample sigma quite a lot. 
But then when we get close to zero, the sigma values start to get less frequently proposed. And that's because when we're far away from zero, a given point can be reached from both sides. It can be feasibly and quite often it is proposed from both sides of that point. Whereas when we get close to zero, essentially we can only get to that point from the right hand side. There is no equivalent proposal from the left because we're never proposing a negative value of sigma. And so what that means is that the relative number of samples that we propose for sigma near zero is less than that away from zero. And because of that, we get a bias in our sample away from zero. So we've seen that this second proposal mechanism, whilst we don't suffer from the same inefficiency as the first one, it is actually a biased sampler. So what can we do in this circumstance? Well, it turns out there is another algorithm which was created shortly after the Metropolis algorithm, which is known as the Metropolis Hastings algorithm and it alleviates the problems with both of the two previous algorithms that we've spoken about. So in the Metropolis-Hastings algorithm, in each iteration, our proposal density is allowed to be asymmetric. So here, we suppose that we sample a proposed value of sigma t primed from some jumping distribution, jumping kernel, which may be centered at the previous value, it doesn't have to be though, and it's got a whole load of other parameters that we can optimize essentially a kind of step size. So to give an example of the sort of jumping kernel that we might use, we might choose in our particular case to use a log normal distribution. And I often use a density which looks something like this, the log of sigma t minus one minus 0.5 times some distance squared. And then the scale parameter here is also t. So this is a distribution that has a mean given by sigma t minus one, but because it's a log normal distribution, it is never gonna propose a negative value of sigma. But because it's a log normal distribution, what this means is that if you kind of plot what this distribution looks like as sigma t gets close, or sigma t minus one gets closer and closer to zero, then what you kind of get is you get, if sigma t minus one's a long way away from zero, it might look something like this. But as I get closer and closer to zero, basically the distribution becomes more and more asymmetric. And so clearly this distribution does not satisfy the symmetry assumption that we have in the Metropolis algorithm. But nonetheless, it turns out we can correct for the fact that we're using an asymmetric jumping distribution in the accept reject step. Then what we do in the Metropolis Hastings algorithm is we calculate a ratio R. And the first part of the ratio R is exactly the same as we had before. It's the probability of X given sigma T primed times the prior density of sigma T primed divided through by the unnormalized posterior for sigma T minus one and then we need another kind of part of this expression, which accounts for the fact that we've got an asymmetric jumping kernel. And so the second part of this ratio is correcting for the fact that we have an asymmetric jumping kernel. So we have the probability that we start at sigma t primed and jump to sigma t minus one, and we divide that through by the sort of inverse of this, which is assuming that we start at sigma t minus one, what is the probability density of jumping to sigma t primed? So this first part here, just for clarity, is the same as the normal Metropolis algorithm, and this second part here is something which is specific to the Metropolis-Hastings algorithm. Also, alternatively, you can kind of think about this as equaling one in the standard Metropolis algorithm, because in the standard Metropolis algorithm, we have symmetry in the jumping kernel, which means that the top and the bottom of this cancel with one another. Then what we do is we sample a value of u from a uniform distribution between zero and one. And then in this algorithm, just like in the Metropolis algorithm, if r is greater than u, then sigma t is equal to sigma t primed, else sigma t is equal to sigma t minus one. In other words, we don't move. The benefit of using this algorithm opposed to the two previous methods is that it kind of takes the best of both of these methods. 
In the first case, it never proposes a value of sigma t which is less than zero. Um, because of that, that means that we have a better ratio of accepted to rejected proposals compared to just using a sort of standard normal proposal mechanism that we would use in the Metropolis algorithm. Secondly, this algorithm is guaranteed asymptotically, in other words, in an infinite sample size, to converge to the true target density. And so it's an unbiased estimator of the target density, unlike the second case where we were using rejection sampling. Now I want to illustrate this fact using some simulations from Mathematica. And so I've got here three plots where in each case I show the desired target density, our posterior distribution, which is shown in black. And in each of these three panels, I show the results from using the three methods that I've spoken about thus far. We've got the Metropolis algorithm, which is just using a normal proposal. We've then got the Metropolis algorithm, which is using this kind of rejection sampling, where whenever we propose a value which is less than zero, we reject that and try and propose another value until we obtain a positive value as our proposal. And then finally, on the right hand side, I've got the result of using the Metropolis Hastings algorithm. So if I run each of these samplers, we can see, first of all, that the blue here is tending, hopefully, as the sample size increases, towards the true density. So we see that the Metropolis algorithm with a normal proposal does work. But if we compare that with the Metropolis Hastings algorithm, we see that the Metropolis Hastings algorithm gives us a less noisy picture of the target density. And that's because of the fact that we are rejecting fewer of the proposals than when we use a standard symmetric normal proposal density. Also, what do we notice? We notice that in the middle case here, we are actually getting some bias in our sampling distribution. We see that the orange line tends to have a value of the probability density, the reconstructed density from using this algorithm, which has an overrepresentation away from zero, and for values near zero, there is an underrepresentation. And so we can see that if we don't correct for the fact that we're doing asymmetric jumping, we get bias in our sampling algorithm. I actually want to finish up with this video by talking about a fourth potential route that you could follow here, which would still allow you to efficiently sample from the posterior, but would mean that you could still use the standard Metropolis algorithm. And that would be to transform sigma using some transformation which meant that the transformed value of the parameter was unbounded. And the typical way to do that is to take the log of the parameter and sample from that instead. Because the log of a positive number is bounded between minus infinity and plus infinity, in other words, it's unbounded. If you do this, then it's important to make sure that you use a Jacobian transformation, because you're taking a nonlinear transformation of a variable. But if you do account for this using a Jacobian, you can just use the standard Metropolis algorithm with a symmetric jumping distribution.